Ah, there we go. All right. So get your stickers. Okay. Nobody at the table anymore. You can get more stickers uh, after the next talk. Um, by the way, I'm Matthias. I'm on Prometheus team, just so you know. Um, working there with Richie on Prometheus team and others. Um, and next up, uh, we have Kemal, actually a colleague of mine. So uh, next talk won't be that weird to introduce my coworker coming from a Prometheus uh, perspective. Um, but yeah, Kemal is talking about uh, achieving zero instrumentation, monitoring using eBPF. So yeah, please take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Matthias mentioned, we are today going to talk about uh, achieving zero instrumentation monitoring. So a bit of a background before. Uh, uh, this is kind of relevant uh, because why I'm talking on this. So I've been working on observability tooling since 2019. Uh, and if it's not obvious, I'm working for Polar Signals. Uh, we, we are a relatively new startup and we are building continuous profiling tools. And I'm maintaining a couple of open source projects or I'm helping to maintain them. Uh, Thanos, Prometheus Client, Golang, and uh, for the relevance of it, Parka, which is an open source continuous profiling project, which is using eBPF. And as I already mentioned, I'm also a maintainer of client goal length or instrumentation. So that's my passion line. You can check out two slides uh, under these links afterwards. So why I am doing this? Uh, so I've been working on Prometheus related observability tools uh, for the couple, for like four years back. And when I'm like uh, started to work on eBPF tooling, I, I suddenly realized that there are like a lot of things that actually intersect here and we can achieve maybe some cool stuff uh, just using eBPF and exposing some metrics, right? But of course, like as all my uh, ideas, it's not original and people already discovered these areas and there are a lot of open source tooling around and today I'm going to talk about them. So first, instrumentation or in other words, white box monitoring. Uh, if you are familiar with Go code, and if you ever use client Golang, uh, this is actually how you can instrument an HTTP service. Uh, you need to register a bunch of uh, methods, and you need to know uh, about your histogram bucket distribution, and maybe you can have some cool middlewares and add to your application. And then you can register to your uh, Prometheus HTTP server and expose some metrics. But like there's a lot of things involved uh, to make it right. And we actually with Bartek talk about like about these things, the best practices of instrumentation uh, using client Golang a lot. You can check out uh, on the internet. And like, but when I first like start working on eBPF, I asked the same question. Maybe can we just like just get rid of this tooling and just have something generic and so that we don't need to get into the code for every time and add some code to just monitor or instrument our application. So for that, like, we should have some goals, right? So when, when I talk about zero instrumentation or like black box monitoring, that means we, are, we want to achieve this without modifying any code for our piece of application or not adding any proxies or like sidecars those type of facilities as well. So how we can do this? Uh, today I will try to explain that. So first of all, like uh, I'm planning to uh, just enlighten your way for about eBPF, how you can actually craft and compile eBPF applications. And uh, with using these examples, maybe this could be a framework about like how you can uh, start a, a journey with your own uh, instrumentation or uh, observability for Prometheus ecosystem. And we will see a couple of like real open source projects that you can just use today. So let's first talk about eBPF. If you don't already know, maybe you are living uh, under a rock. I don't know because this has been a hype for the past couple of years in the CNCF environment uh, ecosystem. So. BPF actually stands for backlit package filtering, but it's like, and the E part is extended uh, version of it, but like this is not true anymore. Like it's a concept that it's own and like it doesn't represent anything anymore. But 
First, when they uh, added this to the Linux kernel, it was uh, for filtering some pa uh, network packages. So right now, you, uh, what eBPF is, it's a virtual machine embedded in the Linux kernel, and you can uh, write code uh, and compile that to the, uh, for a, that tar targeting that virtual machine and execute that in the kernel space. By using that, like you can do a lot of uh, manipulation around networking, you can detect uh, security breaches, or like you can have a lot of uh, observability tooling uh, by using eBPF. There are already a lot of tools in the CNCF ecosystem, and there are a lot of SDKs for different various uh, programming languages. So how does it work? Uh, let's like, this is just an example to actually a EB, simple eBPF program that hooks into a syscall. Uh, it's written in C. Uh, right now you can use uh, C and Clang to compile it, or, or there's an alternative uh, way to use Rust for that. Rust compiler actually sub partially supports it. It's not like covering all the use cases yet, but there are some works ongoing. So this is actually you just like change your target with Clang, give it a C program, of course, you need to be using special uh, eBPF headers, which we'll see next. And then you can load this e bytecode to the kernel uh, eBPF virtual machine. You could be asking, is it actually safe, right? We are writing some C programs and it's running in the Linux kernel. Uh, that's actually, that's like why the Linux kernel developers like uh, give a lot of thought on this and they come up with a way to actually verify the programs, which is the eBPF verifier. This runs in the load time uh, of your user space program and uh, we pass this uh, compiled bytecode to the verifier and verifier, verifier makes sure that like the eBPF uh, program is safe. There are certain restrictions like there's an instruction limit. It was a lot uh, few, uh, earlier, but it's like you, right now you have a, a million instructions or so, so you can write the relatively larger programs. And the verifiers make sure that you are not doing anything harmful. It kind of makes sure that your uh, program actually uh, stops, like this famous uh, computer, computer science program halting problem. It's actually unsolvable, but with some heuristics, uh, that verifier actually makes uh, sure that it's uh, kind of uh, stops at a certain point, so. And then from that bytecode, it just, just in time compiles and executes that. So how do you communicate uh, with the kernel program and with your user space program? Uh, this is where like the eBPF maps comes in, right? And there are, these are special data structures that you can manipulate in, in your eBPF programs. You can write data in them and using user space libraries, which uh, the most popular one, libpf, we, we're gonna see uh, uh, in that in upcoming slides, and you can read this data back and do whatever you like with that data. So one of the things that we need to talk about is the hooks. Uh, so Linux kernel al already exposes a couple of hooks that you can actually attach your eBPF program. These are syscalls, some kernel functions, some tracing points. Also, you can have some custom hooks uh, like k-probes or u-probes or turf events. And when you, uh, and you can, when you write your eBPF program with special syntax, you can say that, okay, this program, whenever this uh, event happens, just run this function uh, in the program that you define. So, this is relatively new thing, uh, compiling your eBPF program and running everywhere. Before this, uh, we were using BCC, which stands for like BPF uh, compiler uh, collection, like GCC. And what it does is like you just package that tooling with your application and in the runtime you, add, you actually compile your C programs to the byte uh, code and then you load that. So you don't need to be targeting any cross compilation issues. But as you can imagine, it's like challenging because it's a lot of tooling that you need to pack with your host uh, environment. If you are running in a containerized environment, it's like, it means large containers. So uh, recently, this is solved uh, with uh, this new uh, paradigm called compiled ones run everywhere. Uh, sometimes it is like pronounced as Cori. The goal of that 
is just omit all the compiler facilities from your runtime and do everything in the compile time and uh, make sure that you can access all the related kernel facilities uh, with your program. How to do this uh, is, is, this is, uh, this is, we are doing this uh, thanks to the uh, thing called BTF, which is uh, type definitions for the kernel. What we do is when we're compiling our uh, program in the development environment, we use this, uh, our own BTF information and compile our bytecode. But then when we are loading the pro program into the kernel, we use the BTF information from the kernel and we do some relocations and make sure that the BPF program that we run in the kernel has the correct access, for example, a struct field. So by this, this actually makes our life a lot easier to actually compile and load programs to any Linux environment. Of course, to be able to support this, you need to be targeting certain kernel versions, but this is kind of implementation detail. So how it, how it does that, like as I quickly mentioned, like loader do, do some relocation magic and then compile the program so it, it makes sure that it actually supports your program. Thanks to Cori, uh, it makes our program super portable. And because of that, we can actually have something like that. We have a manifest, we have a container or, or a program. We can just kubectl apply and we can just run this eBPF program in our cluster and we can uh, collect any cluster related uh, metrics or any observ observability data that we need. One thing we should mention, like to be able to run these programs, you need to access to the kernel. So this, these are privileged containers or pods. So like you need to make sure that like what are you loading in your cluster. So before we continue to the metrics part, we need to make this uh, distinction between system metrics and application metrics. In Prometheus ecosystem, we, uh, with the help of like node exporter or C advisor, uh, we can have a lot of system uh, metrics available to us, right? And on top of that, we can have application uh, metrics which we get from instrumentation. So, but like these tools are actually using uh, Linux uh, observability or monitoring facilities. So they are mostly counters and you just get whatever you, you can collect from the Linux kernel itself. So for the application metrics, as we've seen before, you need to instrument your application. So, but we can actually solve uh, these problems using some eBPF tooling already available. The one of the most popular ones is eBPF exporter from Cloudflare. And what eBPF exporter does uh, it, to be able to solve certain problems that we have uh, with node exporter or C advisor, it's using uh, eBPF trace programs and collecting some data and like rather than collecting just counters with the help of these trace uh, events, you can have histograms and more granular metrics. We will see some examples uh, about that, but I mentioned some B tracing tools. So, so what are those? Again, like I briefly mentioned about BCC, about compiling programs, and I mentioned that it's the old way, but in the BCC also we have already enabled BCC tool, uh, uh, BCC trace tooling. So with the help of these tools, you can have a lot of, uh, you can reach out a lot of observability facilities from the Linux kernel. Most of it I don't even understand. Like this is, this requires like a lot of in-depth knowledge. So you need to individually check out the tools and if you wanna reach out like certain IO usage, for example, you can find the correct uh, programs in this tool set. Again, like the community is, in, is moving from the BCC to the BPF based tooling. And again, BB, uh, all the equivalent programs are written with EBP, uh, libbpf APIs and they are readily available. Uh, under this link, you can check them out. So what eBPF exporter does like using the recent libpf tools, uh, it exposes like more granular metrics, for example, about our system. So how it does it, like you have a configuration format with that YAML, you can configure a metric and then you can have a corresponding eBPF program to actually populate that metric with 
uh, all the necessary labels, and you can load this to the eBPF exporter, and you will get all the metrics that you need. Already in uh, eBPF exporter, there are some implemented examples, and you can use these for certain system metrics. Like, this is a socket example. It's like trying to find out like the socket acceptance lat latency uh, seconds, and if I'm not, it's an, a histogram, and it collects this and it exposes this metrics. And then you can visualize it in a Grafana dashboard using these metrics, and you will have uh, more granular information about your runtime system if you want to dig deeper. And other examples, for example, you can find out about the OOM kills because you can still, ex uh, like for each uh, C group, you can attach these programs and uh, uh, access to this information and you can have this metric as well. So there, there was a talk in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, in the PromCon, and uh, the creators of the eBPF exporter, they dive deep and they explain why did they do this in, in detail. One uh, caveat about that is at this state, they were using BCC, so, uh, and they were mentioning about the BCC challenges or the, all the programs were using BCC APIs. Right now, the uh, repo is updated to use libbpf, so some examples wouldn't apply right now. So I suggest you to check the GitHub repo if you are interested. So one other uh, talk I would like to mention uh, is uh, from Bartek. Uh, he also explored uh, how we can use eBPF uh, exporter and how we can actually uh, create custom programs uh, to, to be able to uh, monitor some network uh, application in the user space, right? Because EB, EB, eBPF exporter also can help you to attach your custom programs. Again, uh, this uh, examples in this talk is also a bit outdated compared to what EB, eBPF exporter has because th these are also based on BCC but the tooling moved on to the libbpf, so some of the challenges that mentioned in this talk is not valid anymore because libbpf, thanks to libbpf, the programs are more portable. But that just an example, you can just add this example, for example, your cluster, and all of a sudden you have all this red monitoring metrics for all, all online systems that you are actually looking for. And one other example to achieve similar things is Hubble from uh, Cilium, Cilium project. Uh, this is a network-based network, uh, network based eBPF tool, and they already give you the, all the uh, necessary uh, metrics if you, want, if you drop the Hubble in your clusters, uh, and it just works magically. One other tool I would like to mention in the same area is the Pixie. It's another CNCF project. What Pixie does, uh, they hook a lot of eBPF programs into your cluster and they collect uh, lots of uh, data and you, they store that for you and then you can actually query with their own language or you can write custom even scripts for that. And all of, like the, out of the box, Pixie can give you automatic red metrics and database query uh, profiling already. They have implemented a lot of uh, facilities around that. There is only one downside of it. To be able to expose some Prometheus metrics out of it, you need to be using open telemetry because Pixie project doesn't like export any Prometheus formatted metrics out of the box. So there are also some more experimental tools. Uh, one of them is, this is a, a little bit out of dated, but the repos and examples are there and there is a talk attached to that. What they do, they do is there is a project called kubectl trace where you can actually execute all BCC tooling against your cluster. And in this repos, they uh, try to like discover uh, using this tool and an operator, what can we achieve and collect and expose them uh, as a Prometheus formatted metrics. And there is actually a really nice talk about it. You can check it out if you want to learn. But these projects are a little bit outdated. That's why I'm saying it's just experimental. It's been three or four years since they've committed anything, and I don't think they are production ready. But the idea was like really nice to discover. To just like expand uh, the R horizon and going outside the uh, Prometheus ecosystem, there are lots of other things that you can do with the BPF. Uh, one of the things 
This is actually a really uh, fancy project. Like, in the, uh, they are calling this Open Telemetry Go instrumentation. What it does is, it's actually attaching eBPF programs to the U return probes, uh, which uh, you can do. And this is actually how uh, popular Golang uh, debugger Dell actually works as well. And then you can actually uh, manipulate what you have in the function call. So what they do, they just inject a tracing ID and so that you can have this uh, manipulate with the manipulated context, you, you can have traces automatically. This, using these type of methods, uh, you can actually have similar metrics as well. Uh, you can like, yes, this is kind of, uh, you can actually break how your Go runtime program is works because you return probes are actually important for the Go runtime. And then you need to, super, you need to be super careful about it. Uh, but this is achievable. You can achieve similar things you, to expose metrics as well for auto-instrumenting. On top of that, those experimental stuff, you can, we mentioned that one of the use cases is the security. You can use a tool like Tracy to actually check out what's going on uh, in, uh, in your cluster or in your running environment about security-wise, and you can alert on that. And shameless plug, and like this is how all these things started. I'm working on this project called Parker Agent, which is an eBPF-based profiling tool. What we do is uh, we like attach all the, uh, the a profiling application to the processes that's running on a, a host, and we just give you a granular uh, picture of what your program is doing as the CPU. The first version of the agent was using Prometheus service discovery. So, like any service discovery we had in Prometheus itself, we were using that. What we were doing is we were attaching to the Kubernetes API, getting all the uh, C groups for the pods, and we were attaching programs for that. By doing that, we were also be able to get uh, all the metadata for that pod, and we, we can uh, attach those labels to the, our profiles. At a certain point, actually, like uh, one of our products is actually converted those profiles to the actual metrics, and we just carried over all those labels, and we just like store them in the, the in a Thanos cluster, and so that we we were able to give a broader picture of what's going on uh, in your cluster using metrics, and you just can drill down from those metrics to the actual profiles. But right now, after that, like we faced a couple of issues. So right now, we built our own storage, uh, and we are moved on from the, that stage. But like while we were working on that, uh, we realized that like there are a lot of things that could have happened in the Prometheus ecosystem. So the gist of it, achieving uh, zero instrumentation monitoring is possible, but it's a lot of work. Thanks to eBPF, these are achievable, but like for each, every, each and every language runtime, you need to specifically impl implement certain programs. And probably when the program runtime changes with the versions, you need to update that if you want to automatically collect some runtime metrics, for example. It's not magical, like, but it's like there are a lot of hard work. So maybe we can find a middle ground to actually automate this. And there are a lot of startups out there or products that are actually doing this. Uh, there are some APM tools that are actually using eBPF and you just install that to your cluster and you get all these metrics. Yeah, and eBPF is stable. Like there are a lot of hype around it. Uh, LibBPF is like, the, it, it has a lot of developers. Uh, people are, community is converged on that and we are building a lot of tools around it. And someday I'm hoping to have like, not to be able to use client Golang, but just have some magical container attached to the, our Kubernetes cluster and we got everything that we need. With that, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, this is all I've got, and if you have any questions, just go for it. <laughs>